What's up, everybody? Let's Talk Jets Radio. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope everybody enjoyed their weekends. Uh, first week of free agency, finally in the books. And, you know, I'll, I'll share the sentiment of most of Jets Nation. I, I think that uh, Joe Douglas did a pretty good job with this, just as far as being smart, being strategic. Um, clearly, the Jets aren't one player away. They're probably not even, you know, a year away. Um, you know, this thing is going to take a little bit of time. As impatient as we all are, and as much as we all want to get back to competitive football, um, we still want to see it done right. And I think that that's kind of been the approach from Joe Douglas. He's sticking to a built through the draft philosophy, uh, keeping financial flexibility with all of his contracts. But I do think he did a decent job as far as just adding a, a lot of young uh, building blocks in terms of guys that are on the rise, guys that are going to be able to help the defense right now that are starting to come into their own with uh, with Whitehead and with DJ Reed, both 25 and 26 years old. Uh, some veterans on the offense. You got two tight ends. So overall, you know, there's there's a lot to be excited about. Um, and, and a lot of reasons for optimism. The team should be much improved. Um, but if there is anything to critique and to kind of wonder, you know, what the plan is, I, I think it's that wide receiver. And I, I totally get it that we're only a week into this thing. Um, there's still plenty of veteran free agents that are still out there. Uh, you still have the draft. There's going to be guys that get cut. There's still potential trade options like, uh, you know, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, possibly LaVisca Chenault. So there's plenty of different avenues that the Jets can go to, that Douglas can go to, to try and address the wide receiver position. But looking at the guys that have already signed with Robinson going for three years, $45 million. Um, DJ Shark, he only got one year, $10 million. I, I thought both of those guys could have been options. And then even some of the trades with Amari Cooper and Robert Woods only going for fifth and sixth round picks. It was just a matter of picking up the contract. Uh, you had Devontae Adams getting traded for a first and second round pick. Granted, you know, I, I understand he wanted to play with Vegas. But, you know, the, the Raiders and even uh, the Browns to an extent with the Watson trade, you know, they were told no initially, and they just kept going. They didn't take no for an answer, and they got their guy. They gave him $230 million fully guaranteed reasons to accept the deal. And so you wonder at what point, probably next year, um, does Joe Douglas look at a player and say, you know what, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get this guy. And I thought this offseason, you know, and this is my one critique, that there would at least be one player that he would kind of have that approach with. I thought it would possibly be at the wide receiver position where, you know, let's be real. We've had how many different quarterbacks over the last number of years, and they've never really had that true number one. You know, we had the, the one season from Brandon Marshall, and who was the last guy that we looked at for a full season that really struck fear in an opposing defense where, you know, a defensive coordinator actually had to game plan for that guy, actually had to worry about double teaming that guy. And it, it's been a very long time since we've had that. We've seen with Burrow when he got chased what happened, with, you know, Dak Prescott when you gave him Amari Cooper and CeeDee Lamb, uh, you know, Kyler Murray, I think it was year two where they got him DeAndre Hopkins, Josh Allen when he got Stephon Diggs. So I thought this would be the offseason, you know, considering we have the money, we have the cap space, um, and we also have the draft picks to potentially make a trade as well. Um, I really thought this was going to be the offseason where the Jets targeted a, a true number one wideout. And I feel like at this point, Joe Douglas has kind of painted himself into a little bit of a corner here where he's got to go wide receiver at pick 10. You, you cannot afford to push uh, taking a receiver into round two. I, I think that would just be a, a huge risk. It's not worth it. Your quarterback is too important. You got to get him a guy that he can rely on. I, I love Elijah Moore, but other than him, you know, Berrios is going to be on the field. We know he's going to be a good role player. You can move him around. He could do different things, but he's not somebody that really strikes fear in a defense. Corey Davis, he's got that ability at times. He also had lots of drops. He's had some injury history. I don't think you can really look at Corey Davis and say that you depend on him. And then other than Corey Davis, what do you have? Uh, you know, I know they gave Jeff Smith the exclusive rights contract, but other than that, the depth chart is pretty much completely washed. You're not depending on Denzel Mims going into the season. You know, maybe, you know, if there's some injuries, he has a good training camp, maybe he gets a spot on the roster, but that's even being optimistic, I think. And then Keelan Cole, Jamison Crowder, right now, those were pretty much your, your three and fours last year. You know, they're still free agents right now, but who are you replacing them with? So at this point, you know, I, I feel like it would be crazy not to take a wide receiver at pick 10. Um, again, there's, there's some free agents out there, guys like Odell Beckham, um, you know, Sammy Watkins, Julio Jones, most of these guys are a year or two past their prime. I don't really think they make a ton of ton of sense for the Jets. So for me, I, I'm, I'm locked in at receiver at pick 10. I, I don't think Joe Douglas can afford to wait. For me, Garrett Wilson's my guy. I know a lot of people love Traylon Burks or Drake London. But for me, Garrett Wilson, he's the most polished, the most complete guy. And if you could get him at pick 10, I, I think you absolutely have to do it. So hope you guys enjoyed. I'm going to bed. Talk to you later.